guys. Hope you're having a great day. So, I've got a video. It is not a practical video. It is not really a useful video. Or well, maybe it is. It's definitely not cost effective. But, it does beg the question. Can you make a decent wine from nothing but the concentrated grape stuff that we use for homebrewing? I mean, we use it all the time, but how good is it? Let's find out. So I just want to take a second to thank my Patreons on Patreon. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So this is a pretty much entirely, almost entirely, Patreon funded video. So you guys, thanks very much. Uh, your support is great. And we get to do weird things, which is cool. So thanks very much, guys. Let's, let's do the video. So my experiment is fairly straightforward. I have an actual demijohn with an airlock. It's already been sterilized and it's got water in here to keep it as sterile as possible. Now, we're using one of these is pretty much standard for making a wine, but we're making this just as is, nothing added. So this is a little bit small. So if we add one of these per gallon of wine that we usually make, I've scaled it up to use one of these, which is a liter batch, four times the size of what we would usually add in. Now, the rules of making this is I'm not going to add any nutrient because this should already have all the nutrients required for a good clean fermentation. I'm also not going to be adding any sugar to it because, well, we get to find out how much sugar is in this wine concentrate because no one knows or well, no one's ever tried that I've found. And uh, we're just going to brew this and see if it tastes any good. There's only one way to find out and that's to do it. So the first step is to take our lovely sterile demijohn. Looking lovely, I sterilized it using bleach and washing up liquid. Ta-da! I even did the top, you know, to sterilize everything. Even my worktop is sterilized so I can put my funnel here. And uh, we're just gonna add this bad boy in. It smells very sweet. So uh, let's... Go ahead and add it all in. That is a lot of great uh, concentrate. So I'm just going to go grab my kettle because, well, it's already sterilized because I made coffee. And I'm going to top this up with cold water after rinsing all of this lovely excess sugary juice out on the kettle. You can just top it up at the tap if your water is tasty. Uh, if you've got really hard water, probably use bottled. So let's just rinse this all out. It's just easier for videos if I just use the kettle. Let's add this in. Let's top she up. I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, gives it a bit of headroom, just like a standard home brewer would do. Now there are no bits in here, so I'm not expecting blow off or puking or whatever you want to call it. But I need to give this a damn good shaking. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So our wine is all shaken up and looking pretty. It's mixed and it's looking pretty good. So now we're going to test it with a hydrometer. Now since this is a one gallon batch, we can actually divide the sugar content by four to tell you how much is in one of these little things since they're all standardized. So I've got my sterilized hydrometer that I've just dunked in water. Place your bets. That's more than I thought. I was only expecting it to be like four or five percent. But it is reading on my hydrometer, about 13%. It's pretty cool. It's a lot more than I thought. So it says here that the 13% mark is there, which is roughly 210 grams of sugar per liter. Hmm. That tastes pretty good, actually. Ooh, it does taste pretty good. Put that on there. So with our sugar content in here, saying it's about 13%, approximately, uh, I did some quick maths because it's around 210 grams 
per litre. Now, 4.5 litres is actually up to the brim, that's why you never get your six bottles. But uh, working off a one gallon batch, there is approximately one kilo of sugar in this whole brew, approximately. So that means each one of these has 250 grams of sugar in, which is pretty cool, approximately. It's all a rough guesstimate. So I added in a one litre batch, there is approximately one kilo. It's pretty handy to know. Just, just if you were interested. So this is our wine, it's all ready to go. So I'm gonna be using my saltinine yeast uh, because well, it's supposed to be floral and fruity and I'm making white wine. I could use a universal wine yeast, it'll work the same, but uh, at the same time, let's try and get the best results we can. So in goes a little sprinkle, like so, and we're done. That should be us looking good. So I will come back in a month and we'll bottle this up. We'll have a little first try, but this wine is probably gonna need some aging. I'm really looking forward to this. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. It's given you some ideas. I mean, better understanding, whoa, all these type of cool things. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons uh, that are helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below and of course the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.